Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going through this week's problem of the week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can see the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So this week's problem of the week is asking you to calculate this integral here, which is 7x squared plus 16x minus 19 over x squared plus 2x minus 3. So it looks like what we're going to have to do, we, it, we can see that the polynomial on top is bigger than the polynomial on the bottom. So we're going to have to do some polynomial long division before we can even start to integrate anything. And once we do that polynomial long division, we will see that there are two potential ways we can proceed with the problem, one of which is significantly easier than the other. But if you don't notice it, there's always the other way as well. OK, so we're going to start off by doing this polynomial long division. So I'm going to set this up like 7x squared 16x minus 19. And then we're going to divide the smaller polynomial, x squared plus 2x minus 3. So x squared to go into 7x squared. We're going to just multiply everything by 7. We're going to go minus 7x squared. 7 times 2, so we have minus 14x. And then 7 times negative 3, so 21. So we have plus 21 here. And we end up getting these cancel out. And we get here 2x and then plus 2. OK, so that's, it looks like we can't divide, or we can't multiply x squared plus 2x minus 3 by anything to get 2x plus 2. So we're going, going to have to accept this as a remainder. And we can express this as this. So I'll just write this integral out here. So 7x squared plus 16x minus 19 over x squared plus 2x minus 3. And this is going to be equal to the integral we have here 7 plus, and then our remainder here over this. So 2x plus 2 all over x squared plus 2x minus 3. OK, so this is already much simpler than what we had up here, because we have no way of easily integrating this with any known rules that we have. So now I'm going to use the linearity of the integral to decompose this into two separate integrals. So we have the integral of 7, don't forget the dx, plus integral of 2x plus 2 all over x squared plus 2x minus 3. OK, so now there are two ways to proceed from here. I'll go through the easy way first and then the a little bit longer way second. So the first way, clearly we know how easily how to integrate the first term, which is just going to be 7x plus a constant. And the second term, so if we notice here that the, the numerator is just the derivative of the denominator with respect to x, we can do a u substitution to allow us to integrate this really easily, really quickly, and save us a lot of steps that we are going to have to go through in the second procedure. So I'm going to bring this up here. So I'm going to go ahead and integrate here, just like I said before. I'm going to label this c1 because there's going to be another constant from the second integral that we have here. However, the number of constants doesn't really matter because they're just constants. They're unknown. They don't have any, any relationship to x. So anyway, that's just going to be c1. And so what we're going to have here, we can perform a u substitution down here. So if we let u equal the denominator, which is going to be x squared plus 2x minus 3. And then we're going to differentiate this with respect to u. So we get over here du and differentiate this with respect to x. We get 2x plus 2 dx, which, as you can see, is just exactly what we have here in the numerator. So our u substitution is going to be super nice with this. So with that fact in mind, we're going to have 1 over u du. OK. So we've already integrated the first term, and the integral of the second term is going to be very straightforward because we know that the integral of 1 over something, or 1 over u in this case, will be ln of the absolute value of u plus a constant. So just rewrite this here. 7x plus c1 plus ln of the absolute value of u plus some other constant, which I will call c2. But again, it doesn't really matter as long as we have a constant of integration. OK, so now I'm going to substitute back in in terms of x, what we have here for u. And I'll move the constants together. So 7x plus 1 of the absolute value 
of x squared plus 2x minus 3 plus c1 plus c2. And this is going to be our final answer. So that's the first way. If you catch on to the fact that there's a nice u substitution here that you can make to simplify the integral, then you can just do this in like three steps here. But if you don't, which I honestly did not realize this the first time I did this problem, there's also a second way to do it, which involves doing a partial fraction decomposition. So I'll go over that. Okay, so I'm just leaving this down here so we can see what we're dealing with here. So the first integral I'll just leave for now. We know it's the same thing as before. We have 7x plus some constant of integration. And then the second part, if you notice, we can nicely factor out the denominator such that we can do a partial fraction decomposition to simplify this fraction here. So the equality here I'm just bringing up around here. So you have the integral of 7 dx plus, okay, so I'll just rewrite this actually up here. 2x plus 2 over x squared plus, actually I'll factor this now. So we're going to factor x squared plus 2x minus 3. And we can factor this as x plus 3 times x minus 1 dx. Okay, so now I can just erase this down here. And we can go about doing our partial fraction decomposition. I'll assume that the viewer is familiar, relatively familiar with how to execute a partial fraction decomposition. So we are looking for some a and b in this case such that 2x plus 2 over x plus 3 quantity, x minus 1 quantity, equals a over x plus 3 plus b over x minus 1. So now, in order to solve for a and b, we need to get a common denominator and then set equal the common terms of the terms of the common power of x. So here, we're going to get a times x minus 1 to get the common denominator here, which is going to be x plus 3 times x plus 1 x minus 1, excuse me, plus b times x plus 3. And this is going to be equal to 2x plus 2. So I'm just setting the numerators equal to one another so that we can solve for a and b. So now I'm going to multiply out the a. So we have ax minus a plus bx plus 3b equals 2x plus 2. OK, so now grouping together common powers of x, we have x to the 0 terms, or terms without an x in which we're going to have negative a plus 3b equals 2. And then we have our x to the 1 terms, where we have a plus b here equals 2. So if we solve this out, we end up finding that a is equal to b is equal to 1. OK, great. So now that we have that, we can decompose our more complicated fraction from right here into a simpler sum of two fractions, which is the goal of the partial fraction decomposition. OK, so this equality from over here, I'm going to go ahead and integrate this 7. So we're going to have 7x plus some constant c1 plus the integral. And now substituting in these values of a, so we have a equals 1 here and b equals 1 here. So now, instead of this here in the integral, I'm just going to substitute these two things in here. So we have 1 over x plus 3 plus 1 over x minus 1. OK, so once again, using the linearity of the integral, I'm going to break this up here, the single integral, into two separate integrals. So we still have the constant uh, here, 7x plus c1 plus the integral of 1 over x plus 3 dx plus integral of 1 over x minus 1. OK, so now we notice here that we have 1 over x plus 3 and 1 over x minus 1. And we know easily we can integrate these using, again, as before, a ln of the absolute value. Because we see here that the derivative of x plus 3 and x minus 1 with respect to x is just going to be 1 in both, case, in both cases, which is, as you can see, what we have in the numerator. So we have here 7x plus c1 plus ln of the absolute value of x plus 3, plus some other constant, c2, plus, once again here, ln of the absolute value of x minus 1, 
plus some other constant, C3. Okay, so now I'm going to group together the lawns and I'm going to group together the constants. 7x stays out front, plus lawn, absolute value of x plus 3, plus lawn of absolute value of x minus 1, plus here we have the sum of Cn from n equals 1 to 3. Or you can just do C1 plus C2 plus C3, it's the same thing. So now we can use the properties of logarithms here. We have an addition of logarithms of the same base, so we can multiply, we can multiply them together as follows. 7x plus lawn absolute value of quantity, x plus 3, quantity x minus 1, plus sum from n equals 1 to 3 of c sub n. And here, simplifying this out, not necessary, but might as well, just so we can see the equality here that we got from the last integral. 7x plus ln of the absolute value of x squared, so x squared plus 2x minus 3 plus the sum from n equals 1 to n of c sub n. So as you can see, ignoring that the, the fact that the constants, or I mean, taking into consideration the fact that the constants, we have three constants here, and we had two constants in the previous one, it doesn't matter because they're just constants. Um, they're arbitrary. Um, it, what, all that's important is that we have some constant of integration added on here. So and as you can see, Regardless of whether we did it the easy way, the u substitution, or the slow way, which would be the partial fraction decomposition, we ended up getting the, the same answer as our final solution. So this is going to be our final answer for this integral here. So for more Problem of the Week videos, you can click our playlist here. To subscribe to us, you can click here. And to visit us at centerofmath.org, you can click the link here. Thank you for watching.